Really happy to be here with Kaylee Larkin. Um, so the reason for this interview is because one of my viewers, maybe you're watching this right now, asked me, George, can you talk about a, a, uh, attachment styles and how they relate to business and marketing? And the first person I thought of right away, oh, attachment styles. I know someone who's an expert in that, Kaylee Larkin. <laughs> so... That's why we're here. Um, I have heard about attachment styles, Kaylee, for uh, for a long time, I think, um, just off and on. But I never studied it. And I figured, well, why not ask someone who has been working with a lot of clients with attachment, you know, uh, in, in this area. So, uh, Kaylee, welcome to this interview. I'm really looking forward to, to seeing how this will be enlightening for myself and, and many others here. Um, maybe you could start with formally introducing yourself. Sure. Hi, I'm Kaylee. So glad to be here. Thank you so much, George, for having me on. And yes, so I am a love and attachment coach. I help people who are struggling with attachment dynamics and their relationships to develop a relationship with more ease and security and deep connection. And so very passionate about what I do and super excited to be talking about it in the different context today with George. So yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, speaking of attachment, I'm right now attached to my bat my bed <laughs> because I'm uh, bedridden right now with uh, an infected foot. Uh, this is day four. I think it's getting better very gradually. I'm on antibiotics uh, yeah. as well. Um, but I am really happy to be here. I'm I'm lucid. I just can't work at my usual desk. So apologies everyone for uh, different different and strange background today. All right. Well, it's a testament for how you show up for people that you're here, George. So yeah, thank you. thank you. Thank you. I'm probably a little too attached to uh, making sure I don't cancel on, on things. Maybe sometimes I should, but but yeah. I, I was looking forward to this anyway. Um, okay, so let's start with the basics. Um, some people watching this have probably, are probably, you know, they know about this, but um, just review it for from your perspective. What are the attachment styles? Great. Okay. So there's four attachment styles and you may hear slightly different names around them, but the names that I'll be using are secure, anxious, avoidant, and disorganized. And these attachment styles, we all have them. So every single one of us has an attachment style. Um, something that we might talk about is that we actually have more than one and um, we are a blend and that can come up for people in different ways, but just keep things simple right now. The different attachment styles, <clears throat> which are anxious. So anxious attachment is, it comes from a, a background where someone, excuse me for a second. <laughs> I mean, George, we may need to edit this part out. A little bit of a frog in my throat this morning. So we're both a little bit. No, you're good. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Okay, so the first style we'll talk about is anxious attachment style. Anxious attachment style, develops these all develop when we're super young and we get this attachment style that develops between us and our, our primary caregivers when we're very very young some people even say in the womb and it kind of has to do with the dynamics that happen early on and these dynamics that happen they can be back forth push pull how attentive someone is how consistent they are these kinds of dynamics develop our attachment system and we carry this into our adult relationships. It's very fascinating. So the anxious attachment style, for example, uh, they didn't get this background of consistency and reliability. So in their adult relationships, they're constantly wanting this feeling of consistency and reliability and they're seeking out like so often happens in life, right? George, like we're looking for the things we didn't get. So they're trying to, they're trying to, um, get that consistency from their partner, that reassurance. They wanna know the relationship's okay, everything's okay. They like a lot of external reassurance. They like a lot of external validation that feels really good to them. Um, now for the avoidant attachment style, they had a different experience. So they may not have felt seen or felt met in a deep emotional way. So perhaps their caregiver was consistent they came attentively as far as you know getting them fed and all the things that we need when we're very young however they may not have felt that deep connection or they may just not have felt it frequently enough and so as a result they learned to kind of give that to themselves they became very independent very self-sufficient and they lean a lot on that self-sufficiency 
in their adult relationships. So for example, uh, someone with avoidant attachment, one example that I like to use is say uh, people are going on a vacation together. So say a couple's going on a vacation together and you know people have different expectations and different feelings about vacations. Um, so for someone who's more anxiously attached, uh, they might be excited about uh, spending time with their partner. They're like, woohoo, this is a chance for us to get to know each other better and get deeper. Maybe our relationship will get closer. And they're feeling a lot of kind of excitement about the closeness, about spending time uh, with their partner. For someone who has avoidant attachment style, they're thinking about, okay, let's plan this. Like, let's um, figure out what we're going to do. And they're thinking, okay, let's like divvy up tasks. Let's um, make sure that everyone's like kind of doing their part. And they kind of take this like um, the stance of we each have our own kind of role in this. And so there's like a slightly different approach um, to how people do different activities. And this can show up in all kinds of different ways. Um, so for the anxious person, they have a fairly high tolerance for that closeness. For the avoidant person, maybe not so much. They can get a little stressed out when there's too much approach. And as you can imagine, in a vacation scenario where people are going off together and they're uh, spending a lot of time together, that can cause some friction if those two people happen to be in a relationship together. So there's just like a lot of different ways that this can play out. The vacation example is just one, one small way um, in the way that these dynamics can play out in the relationships. And then the last style, well, actually, I haven't talked about secure attachment yet. So secure attachment. Uh, secure attachment, people tend to feel fairly um, flexible in their, um, their approach, their distancing. They're comfortable with um, hellos and goodbyes. Um, they feel you know, warm and connected in a relationship. They're able to provide that, um, provide support to their partner, help their partner meet their needs, and they're able to advocate for their own needs. So they have like a very balanced way of both uh, making sure that they're okay and making sure their partner's okay, very team-oriented approach to relationship. And then the fourth style, disorganized attachment, again, these all have different names, and I know they sound a little bit judgy. Um, just something to keep in I know, mind is I that- I know the disorganized style, the, the parents didn't teach the kids about spreadsheets. That's probably the- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna get the spreadsheets. <laughs> Um, actually, spreadsheets are related to all of this. Um, yes, so disorganized. <laughs> it, it can show up in that way, and we can talk about that. Um, but it's called disorganized because they can flip-flop between anxious style and avoidance style, and sometimes they go back and forth between the two. Sometimes they lean more on one side, like they might lean more towards anxious or lean more towards avoidant. Um, and there's also a fear component that's based in trauma. So, so the disorganized is like they kind of they're more yeah they they have multiple styles working with them is that right yes that's absolutely okay. right cool yeah. yeah um now this is amazing i mean i can uh, so much of my life and relationships is starting to clear up for this through this conversation <laughs> yeah, <laughs> i'm no like oh okay no, no wonder no <laughs> and we um, all see ourselves in this it's totally normal yeah like i said everyone has an attachment style and usually and a blend so. what's interesting to me i i well, the fact that you work with people, I imagine this means people, once they become conscious of their attachment styles and their relationships, um, they can start to, is it reparent themselves or something like that? So that can, can people, you know, basically transition over to a secure attachment style as an adult? So, yeah, that's a great question. And there is a common misconception that attachment style is unchangeable. And the fact is, like you're saying, that you can make changes um, with attachment to shift into a more secure attachment style. Um, people do have different attachment styles in different relationships. So um, someone could be, you know, anxious with a neighbor, secure with their best friend. They could be, you know, mostly secure in their relationship. They occasionally go into anxious, depending on different circumstances and scenarios. It's so interesting. Yeah, because I notice myself being, um, I guess it would be anxious. I'm in, I'm part of like a, a men's WhatsApp group and I'm quite anxious there because I don't get the validation that I'm used to elsewhere. Yeah. Um, a bunch of guys just don't know how to validate each other. Um, <laughs> and no, 
Uh, it's not always true, but in this group it is. But uh, but yeah, in other groups, I'm very comfortable and it all depends. It depends so much on. And so um, I want to start moving over to talking about business and marketing and what is. Um, yeah, and you can, of course, bring up anything else you, you'd like that you think is important to talk about. But I'm I'm curious when it comes to like. Okay, so there's two two scenarios I guess I want to talk about. One is our relationship to clients. And second is our relationship to our quote unquote audience. Sure. Um and how attachment styles can play into this. So for example, okay, let me do you have a sense of like is there among the pop among the average you whatever that means average let's say north american population do you work mostly with americans or mostly yeah yeah so among the people you've worked with well, just your your sense of the north american population what is there like a prominent a, a prevalent style um and um yeah any kind of percentages that you're aware of Sure. So the research says like around 50% of people are securely attached. But like I said, people That's are more not... than I expected, actually. Exactly. <laughs> it's more than most people would expect when they learn anything about this. And I think it's the reason why that seems odd. It doesn't quite jive with our experience. I mean, for me, it makes sense because I work with lots of people who are coming from an insecure attachment style. But you're also saying that and you're, you're a business coach, you know, you work with solopreneurs. And so I mean, Part of the reason, I think, is because we don't just have one attachment style, like we're a blend. So if someone says they're secure, they also have a little bit of anxious, a little bit of avoidant, a little bit of disorganized, probably. Maybe more of some than the other. I describe it like a pizza. You know how a pizza has different toppings? Like you might have a lot of cheese or just a little cheese. Yeah, or a lot of pepperoni. So yeah. I think of it like that. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about our connections with our clients. I mean, you obviously yeah. can um, come from your own experience. Um, let's say, and oh, sorry, 50% secure. And what, what about the rest of the 50%? Like how many are anxious versus? Versus. I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head. I think sure. it's a round balance between anxious oh, and avoid. Okay. All right. So we could talk about kind of both of these pretty equally. Yeah, yeah, what I do remember is the amount of avoidant is actually increasing uh, in the world. The amount oh, of avoidance is going up. Wow. Yeah, and it wow. also does vary depending on country. So, like, yes, of course, countries have higher percentages of avoidant or anxious or disorganized. Right. Yeah, I can imagine that. Yeah, yeah. I can. I, <laughs> I mean, yeah. this is kind of broad based, but I can I can imagine. Well, I grew up in you know Taiwan, you know, just the, the far east. Um, yeah probably more avoidant i don't know because a lot less emotions are expressed compared to americans they always think americans are so expressive we say we say yeah. i love you you know it's like I've, I've never heard my parents say i love you in my life <laughs> like like to me you know like like almost never um yeah, yeah. i'm trying to remember back and they're not going to be watching this so they you know but uh but yeah so so thinking about our relationship to our clients and our potential clients mm -hmm. what might anxious or avoidant you know behave like in, in a way that's probably not beneficial for their business or sure. you could you can you can answer the question you know from the opposite side is what might a secure uh attachment style be like as they approach clients and potential clients sure yeah so secure is gonna you know how it's they say like how we do one thing in life is how we show up in a lot of other ways so this is such a great question because of course it's going to influence how we show up in other ways in our life and that's one of the misconceptions of attachment it's like it only shows up in relationships and romantic relationships and it doesn't it shows up everywhere so what you're asking is about the relationship between like a coach and their client so for someone who has secure attachment they tend to show up in their relationships in like a very warm um, affirming way, they have good boundaries, they have a, a good sense of self worth. So like they're able to kind of maintain those boundaries, to give empathy, they're very, they're highly attuned, of course, meaning they can, you know, recognize people's uh, emotions and identify what that means, and then respond and adapt accordingly. So all of that is going to play into their interactions with clients. Um, something that the anxious attachment style, so the strength of the anxious attachment style is they are also very attuned. 
they tend to be very um, focused on others due to their fears of abandonment. And so because they're focused on others, that can make them excellent at reading people. It can make them excellent at kind of responding and trying to meet people's needs. Something that they might struggle with is boundaries. So they might be so over-focused on the other person that they lose track of themselves, or they might not set good professional boundaries for themselves. So that's one way in which that could play out um, is, you know, they might, they might neglect themselves in some way. Gosh, um, I, that sounds like the vast majority of my audience or something like that. <laughs> I mean, right? Like, well, it's not just my audience. I feel like that, that sounds to me like a majority of people who do any kind of personal growth program. I don't know. Cause I, I feel like in the past few decades, um, the idea of self-care and boundaries has become so yeah. important to talk yeah. about. And to me, that that sounds like an anxious attachment style, doesn't that? Yeah, boundaries um, also comes up in disorganized attachment, a little bit okay. less in avoidant attachment. Okay. There, we'll get to that in a second. Yeah, yeah, sure. So the, yeah, so that's the, the anxious style is like they can focus on, um, yeah, on making sure that they're being consistent with their, with their, Say they're market. Oh, we're not talking about marketing. We're talking about client. Oh no, it's okay. Yeah. I, either way, no, you can you can bring in marketing yeah. at this point. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, being consistent with their marketing attempts, um, their marketing endeavors, being consistent with their clients, all of that is important. Now, for the avoidance style, their strength is they can be very analytical. They can be great. Now they're the guys who are great with spreadsheets. Sorry, I don't mean guys. This can be any gender. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> but. They, they tend to be, you know, a little better with those sort of like task focused, analytical mm. focused things, just as a generalization. All of this is generalization. Um, and where they can maybe work a little more is around the kind of interpersonal, like, it might be helpful for them to focus on their empathy building, identifying their clients' feelings and needs and helping their clients identify their feelings and needs. That's where they might be a little stronger. Um, and when it comes to marketing, it would be how what does their audience feel and need? So connecting with their audience can be helpful. That would be that would be a point where it could be helpful for them to to develop. Um, and then for the disorganized style, they can flop flip flop back and forth, or they can lean more towards avoidant or lean more towards anxious. Like I said, um, they have this fear component, and so and remember that's based in trauma. So that fear component it's helpful for them to find ways for them to feel safe. This is a lot of the work that I do in the more romantic side of it. But I can definitely imagine how this can come up for a solopreneur because so much of the work of a solopreneur involves putting ourselves out there, right? It's, it's scary to put ourselves out there for a lot of people and to be seen. And to, then there's the consistency of creating a consistent message and connecting in an emotional way, you know, and so all of that can kind of play in together. Uh, so for the disorganized style, again, there's boundaries, like they want to work on having really good boundaries. Um, they want to work on that consistency because um, they can go from hot, cold, hot, cold, like they might be very warm one minute and then kind of draw back because that didn't feel so safe. So they draw back wow. and they kind of, yeah, sound Again, familiar. this is like, Everyone in yes. my audience. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. So yes, um, they might I hear that a lot. Yeah. Which kind of makes sense. I mean, you might get fewer people with avoidant attachment style, um, partly because they do tend to be more solo. I mean, they may join group programs, but they often do tend to work solo. Right. So yeah, that does yeah. make a lot of sense. Yes. Get styles. Yeah. That's interesting. And so this is really good. So so then let's move a bit into, and then we're we're going to complete the interview shortly, but. Let's move into like, well, what can we do <laughs> yeah, if for we sure. find it, if we see ourselves in these patterns of, for example, like you said, hot and cold, not so consistent, or we um, uh, are are too, not too empathetic, but we're, we're really overly giving to our audience. Like we're like, oh gosh, I got to respond, reply to thoughtfully to every comment, you know, like. And this is why some people burn out on social media. Like they, they yeah. don't want to think about social media because they're like, gosh, I, I, I have all this overwhelm of people are going to be looking at me and I got to care about them and da, 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 da. Or, um, or like you said, the avoidance style is, I, 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 I'm going to say, I'm going to, um, let's, let's lean into the anxious style because like I said, I think that's 
probably more of the folks in my audience. Um, yeah. People who want to work on other styles can can work with you privately on this. But anxious style, how can they? What are some things they can they can remember or do to stay more balanced and have better boundaries as they as they do their online visibility? For example. Yeah, that's really great. So remembering that the anxious style is um, consciously or unconsciously seeking external validation, they can start to begin to remember their own self-worth and their self-love. And self-love can be a little bit of a struggle for, for folks with that style, with the anxious style. And so there's lots of practices um, for self-love. I cover it in my course. There's all kinds of different ways that we can work on our self-love, but that can be very valuable for them and boundaries working on, like you said, like, okay, I don't need to respond to every single comment right now. Like I can do this at my own pace. Um, sure, it is you know, nice to be responsive, but you know, making time to do that and not feeling the, the stress of that, balancing it out with, um, you know, finding that work-life balance is really helpful for, um, well, for all the styles actually, but for different reasons and different ways, yeah. That's great because, yeah, the, the sustainability of our business um, depends a lot on the sustainability of our, of our marketing. Yeah. Uh, yes, we get some new clients usually through word of mouth, all of us do. And yet with marketing, that word of mouth is so much greater. And so we have to, you know, in my, in my experience, in my, you know, in my observation, you know, the, the more consistently show up, the more likely there's a, there's a full client load, et cetera. And so, yes, let's continue. Let's keep, let's all work on these practices of, you know, self-care, self-love, self-esteem. Um, so that, and boundaries, like you said, uh, yeah, this is really great. Um, so before I, I ask you about how people can work with you and the offers, any other advice or insight you want to you wanna share before we uh, start to complete? Sure. So, I mean, I could maybe offer your audience um, one practice that you could do to kind of build that self-love, self-compassion. Yes. Because we've all, we've all struggled, right, around, you know, putting a message out consistently or putting ourselves out consistently or whatever it is. Um, just being an entrepreneur can be challenging sometimes. And so remembering that failure is feedback and it's temporary and just having that self-compassion for yourself can be so valuable. And so one thing to do for yourself is to just imagine like in those times when you've had a hard time, like, or say you're imagining a friend is going through a hard time. How would you, how would you speak to that friend? How would you kind of remind that friend that it's okay and then compare it to okay how how do you speak to yourself when you have a setback in your business and then just kind of noticing okay what's the difference and how might you change your languaging so that you are giving yourself more warm and loving and uh, supportive messaging around your business and around your self-worth and some mm. people even like to kind of write this out like and prop yeah. it up somewhere they'll remember it like next mm -hmm. to their computer screen um, you know, like the old thought and the new thought, like, um, I'm, I'm not getting enough done. Like, I think mm. that's a problem for entrepreneurs. It's like, I didn't get enough done today and change that to something like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing as much as I can in a, I don't know what a good rewrite for that would be something like I'm doing as I'm doing as much as I can. And it's important for me to rest <laughs> or something. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. doing exactly the right amount and rest yeah. is important or yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, no. And and each person, like you said, can be creative with how and, you know, based on their own style or their own uh, personality and their own needs and their own interests can can write what. So this is brilliant. This is really, um, it's so simple, but it's profoundly helpful if we do it. Okay. Um, okay, just we have a few minutes left and I want to make sure people know how to work with you. And so two things I want you to, talk about one is your course okay mm -hmm. and secondly is if people want to work with you individually is that available um so start with your course you mentioned okay. it earlier yeah yeah great i have a course called secure attachment rewire and it's a course designed for the anxious attachment style to build in more self-love and good boundaries and um self-regulation some of the things that we've been talking about today into their relationships to build a relationship that's what they want. And um, that is available as a self-paced course. 
Um, it's a seven module course and has lots of different videos and audio meditations and stuff like that to help you um, rewire your attachment system for more security and ease in relationships. And then as far as one on one coaching, I do that as well, George, thanks for asking. And um, that is also available at my website. All of this is at KayleeLarkin.com. You can um, download my uh, 10 ways to let's see, what is it called? 10 ways to build secure attachment and a fulfilling relationship. And those are 10 ways that you can kind of incorporate uh, steps into your daily life for more ease and joy and security in your relationships. So yeah, super. Available. I know you have a lot of great free resources on your website and on your YouTube channel, etc. Um, how, do, how does someone know that they're ready to, to work with you individually as a client? That's a really great question. I think that if they go through the material and they resonate with what they read, um, yeah, or if yeah. they resonate with what they listen to, then you know they'll know whether or not it's a good fit. Um, but they can also reach out for a consult if they want to get more clarity. And um, I do a free 20 minute consult and they're welcome to reach out uh, on my website. Mm. And I know you work, uh, tell us about some of the kind of presenting issues or situations that clients come to you for that you really enjoy working working through? Yeah, love that question. Um, so I do a lot of work with people who they are, perhaps they've had a string of relationships that have these like familiar patterns of distancing, pursuing, and they're tired of that. And they're really into doing the self growth to figure out how to change that pattern. And so they want to have relationships where they're not doing that anymore, they want to step into building a new type of relationship, one where they're getting their needs met and expressing their needs in a way that is, you know, held and respected and reciprocated and build a more reciprocal relationship and also to build a better relationship with themselves. Yeah, that's awesome. And I imagine you could do the work with people who have, who want to apply this to their, their business, their marketing, uh, con their connection, their relationship to your audience as well. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose I could. I mean, I haven't specifically done that before, but I think that it's all it, related in some way. Yeah, it's really, and it starts today. No, <laughs> no. Um, so <laughs> yeah, folks, go ahead, and, go ahead and, go ahead and, you know, just overwhelm <laughs> Kaylee with your request for uh, working with her. <laughs> no. um, yeah, thank you so much, Kaylee. I'm so glad we got to do yeah. this and uh, looking forward to, to more. Thank you so much, George. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you.